I want to play you a clip from a guy called Bassem Youssef. He was known as the Arab John Stewart. Uh, and I interviewed him recently about the, the war. And he said this about you. The saddest thing that I saw is the people that were in so much support of Israel are anti-Semite themselves. MTG, 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 uh, Marjorie T Taylor Greene, you know, she said like, oh, those are, I send my aides and they took pictures of the protesters. Basically, she's surveilling protesters. And uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is very known for a very famous post in 2018 where she blamed the California wildfire uh, fires on a Jewish space laser gun. You just watched Marjorie Green get confronted with comedian Bassem Youssef's criticism of right-wing supporters of Israel like her. Now, in that clip that Pierce was playing for her, Bassem went on to make a broader point about this double standard by supporters of Israel who will conflate any and all criticism of Israel's government with anti-Semitism. Meanwhile, evangelicals like Marjorie Taylor Green, who literally spread anti-Semitic lies about Jewish space lasers, get a pass because they support the actions of Israel's government. So if you don't say anything about their use of white phosphorus or collective punishment or indiscriminate bombings in Gaza, you can be as anti-Semitic as you want, and they won't say anything. It's, it's very disgusting. Now, to be clear, this isn't just a Marjorie Green problem. This is a broader trend with the Support Israel movement. And I want to show you what I mean before we get to her response. So thousands marched on D.C. in support of Israel's genocide in Gaza, and it featured a diverse group of psychopaths from Democrats like Van Jones, Chuck Schumer, and John Fetterman to Christo-fascists like Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, who said calls for a ceasefire were, quote, outrageous, and it even featured evangelical pastor John Hagee, who once claimed that Hitler was sent by God and even blamed Jewish people for the Holocaust saying their disobedience towards God led to their persecution. That's a little bit of a snapshot of the people who participated in this rally, along with Democratic Party leader Hakeem Jeffries. Now, those comments from John Hagee were so detestable, obviously so, that even Republican John McCain rejected his endorsement in 2008. But at this rally, John Hagee, an anti-Semite, was welcomed with open arms including by John McCain's daughter, who is there with her friend Tulsi Gabbard, who purports to be anti-war, but she's there in solidarity with a government carpet bombing Gaza right now, which is interesting to me. And John Fetterman, an American senator who draped himself in an Israeli flag and condemned his own Democratic colleague for supposed anti-Semitism, had fuck all to say about being in the presence of an actual anti-Semite like John Hagee. I guess it doesn't matter, because he supports Israel's war crimes, so... It doesn't matter that he said Hitler was sent by God. It doesn't matter that he blamed Jewish people for the Holocaust. What matters is that he's there showing support for Israel as they bomb Gaza to smithereens, including bomb hospitals and ambulances and refugee centers and schools. Doesn't matter because he supports that. But this is what Bassem Yusuf was talking about. This deep level of unseriousness from supporters of Israel who weaponize claims of anti-Semitism to shut down criticism of the government of Israel, yet allow people like John Hagee and Marjorie Green to be openly and explicitly anti-Semitic, but they're welcomed into this movement. Now, Marjorie Green shamelessly accused others of anti-Semitism after she literally blamed Jewish people for wildfires. So, with that being said, you kind of know the context. You know what Yusuf was referring to. I have a full video in his comments there if you want to watch that. But this is her response to Bassem Yusuf calling out her dumbass comments about a Jewish space laser. You did, didn't you? Because I've read that post. I went and got it, and I read it. Uh, November 17, 2018, you posted a long thing on Facebook that was just complete gobbledygook. I mean, you made out that yeah, the, that's the why Rothschilds. I, wrote this book. And a, I talk uh, about Jewish space lasers. Do you admit in that that was a lunatic? That's something I never said. No, excuse well, me, Pierce. Yeah. I never said that phrase. That was a lie about me. If you read my original Facebook post, I never said. And that's why I had to write this book because people like you and whoever that guy was, was it me? who sounds like one of the trolls in my social media, yeah. uh, attacking me and calling me names when he's never met me. I, um, I'm not anti-Semitic at all. I support Israel, and I am outraged at Hamas attacking innocent Israeli citizens, yeah, women, Marjorie, children, I'm not calling slaughtering you, babies. I'm not calling you anything. I'm just saying that you did post this uh, crazy post. 
basically alleging I, that. You know, I know, no, you know, the media lied about it, and that's why I wrote my book, it. Piers, because I'm setting the record straight. And I hope people order my book at mtgbook.com. It's a <laughs> well, great a read. Good people need to know exactly who I am, who I am, and what I really believe in. It's a very good. For. It's a very good plug for the book. But you did suggest in this post, which I've read very carefully, you did suggest that the California wildfires at the time had been started by PG&E in conjunction with the Rothschilds using a, a, a space laser in order to clear room for a high-speed rail project. They're your words, not mine. Well, you know, people have twisted my words nonstop, and I guess that's what you're going to continue to do. But we're working hard in America anything, to straighten out our problems. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're doing a great job of it, Piers, and that's what you and your colleagues do all the time. Marjorie, I just don't. I, I don't handle have, it. I don't deal with it, and I cast it to the Marjorie, side. Marjorie, I have um, your, You know, there's a lot of issues here. happening that we could talk about. I'm going to we come to those. We could talk about. But before we before okay. we move on, though, you have to just accept what you wrote yourself, don't you? You deleted it. So you obviously you were embarrassed by well, it. Well, that would be like that would be like me asking you to accept the fact that you defended prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, but never say anything about January 6th defendants who are having their rights abused and are rotting away in solitary confinement here in our country. Yeah. So, of course, she's not owning up to it or addressing the main point that Yusuf is making. But you can tell that she was embarrassed by seeing this criticism because after this interview, she went on Twitter and took a shot at Bassem Yusuf, writing, I just went on Pierce Morgan and he asked me what I think of this guy. I've never even heard of him, but he sure looks interesting. Now, first of all, that's not what Pierce Morgan asked. He didn't just play some random clip and ask you, what do you think of this comedian? He was criticizing you in particular, but you didn't engage with his criticism. And furthermore, she shared a screenshot of him where I guess that's supposed to make him look crazy. But he is literally a comedian making a funny face to mock people like you and your unseriousness. But by all means, Marjorie, please pick a fight with the comedian. I'm sure it'll end in his total humiliation and not yours. But I want to go back to Yusuf's original point. Supporters of Israel's government are so thirsty for U.S. support as public opinion turns against them that they will welcome anyone, including actual anti-Semites, into their movement like Marjorie Greene and John Hagee. Also, that way they can say, look at all of these people who support what we're doing in Gaza. It's a just cause. What we're doing is not wrong. Those who criticize us are wrong. Now, that's not the only double standard, because while supporters of Palestinian human rights get blacklisted and lose their jobs, you also have celebrities like Sarah Silverman, who defended collective punishment against Palestinian civilians, go on to guest host the daily show two weeks later like can you imagine if somebody defended collective punishment against israelis it would be wrong justifiably so and they would likely get canceled but if you say it about palestinians well we've dehumanized them so have at it say what you want we don't view them as human beings now on top of that you also have republicans like max miller and brian mast literally advocating for violence against Palestinians, while the only Palestinian American in Congress was censured for saying from the river to the sea. And she added, she does not mean genocide. She means freedom for Palestinians, but yet wasn't enough. They censured her, but not Brian Mast or Max Miller, who said, we're going to turn Gaza into a parking lot. Listen, the longer that supporters of Israel refuse to engage with this double standard and perpetuate it, the more unserious they look. I mean, as if supporting a genocide wasn't discrediting enough, but I mean, the people who don't know any better, they see these contradictions. They're too obvious to miss. And while we're on the subject of double standards, there's been this hyper focus on fringe supporters of Palestinian human rights who also advocated support for Hamas. Now, this includes some DSA members in New York and BLM Chicago after October 7th, who posted an image of a paraglider saying we stand with Palestine. And listen, I unequivocally condemn that, even if it's a small minority of people who are advocating for Palestinians. But the question that I want to ask is, is anyone who is supporting the actions of the Israeli government going to condemn any of this? For example, 
quote, let Israel finish the job. I mean, after 10,000 plus Palestinians are dead, including 4,000 children, how can you interpret this as anything but an explicit call for genocide? Where's the outrage? Where's the condemnations? Now, here's more genocidal signs at the pro-Israel rally. Quote, many Gazan civilians are Hamas in training. There is no proportionate response to Hamas. Civilians who praise the slaughter of Jews are not innocent. Well, by that same token, could you say that any Israeli who praises the slaughter of Palestinians Palestinians are also not innocent. I mean, these people don't understand how hypocritical what they're saying is. Now, here's my favorite. From the river to the sea, Israel is what you'll see. Now, I was told that from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free was an explicit call for genocide, but I'm assuming that this person who was part of a crowd that chanted no ceasefires advocating for a peaceful one-state solution with equal rights for Palestinians and Israelis. I mean, look, zero condemnation, zero outrage, nothing for that. In the same way that Republicans like Brian Mast and Max Miller can get away with genocidal rhetoric, supporters of Israel, they can do the same too, I guess. But the reason why this doesn't feel like a double standard to them is because supporters of Israel's genocide don't actually view Palestinians as human beings. So if you think about it from their perspective, how can Israel be guilty of a genocide if their targets aren't actual human beings? These are animals. I mean, this is what Israel has reiterated time and again. So if you're not killing human beings, then it's not a genocide. I mean, this is why the condemnations of genocidal rhetoric have been asymmetric. It's because one side does not view the other side as human beings. And to be clear, violence and genocidal rhetoric against Israelis, along with support for Hamas, that's all indefensible too, and I condemn it in the strongest possible terms. I condemn the October 7th attack on Israel. It was horrific. But the reason why it's so easy for me to do that is because I view Israelis as human beings, where supporters of Israel can't say the same about Palestinians, hence why they're standing in solidarity with Israel, even after 4,000 Palestinian children have been killed. It's just so disgusting and monstrous. And the fact that Democrats like John Fetterman and Hakeem Jeffries are aligning with Mike Johnson and Marjorie Greene in solidarity of supporting Israel kind of tells you everything you need to know about the moral bankruptcy of this movement. But getting back to Marjorie Greene, she couldn't respond to Youssef's double standard because she had no response. Instead, she decided to change the subject and talk about January 6th rioters. Now, that was a very bad idea, as you're going to see, because Pierce Morgan anticipated this and challenged her on that as well. And after she couldn't take the heat there, she decided to switch back to the subject of Israel again. We can't allow this just to just to be gone, you know, just to let it go. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants and allow him to become our president because he did not win the selection. It's being stolen and the evidence is there. The so there can be no peaceful transfer of power. So what's the opposite of peace? That's why we objected, Piers. That's yeah, why that's we why, objected. And, and that's why, Marjorie, a gigantic um, mob that of... I have as a member of Congress. Okay, but let me make you my know, point. There was a law firm that tried to take me off the ballot, and they were laughed out of the courtroom let in me Georgia. Make my point. And you were giving their talking points. I can't tell you how much people in Georgia would think. And let this me give is you ridiculous. my talking point, which is that a huge mob of people, many of whom were violent crashed into the capital to try and thwart democracy. Wait, because, do you mean like... Because you people mean like, like you, Marjorie... Hamas people like rioters? you said two things. You mean like the pro-Hamas no, no, rioters? No, no, no. I'm talking about came January 6th. That occupied our Marjorie, capital Marjorie, on uh, October 18th Marjorie, that Rashida answer, Tlaib Marjorie, herself led? Marjorie, answer my question. No, wait, we're, we're in 2023, Piers. Marjorie, answer we my question. We just had a pro-Hamas mob You've written a book in which you talk about these the things. Okay. And Rashida Tlaib Can I ask you a question? Wait, I want to talk about Rashida Tlaib in Israel again. Just, that was amazing. Now, if you watch the full clip, which I'll link to down below, by the way, that goes on for a while and he never gets a straight answer from her. And for the record, I have to say that Pierce Morgan is somebody who I don't like. I think he is a deeply unserious political hack. But having said that, though, I did enjoy him pushing back against her lies about the 2020 election in this particular clip because she came on with the expectation that this was going to be a softball interview where she could freely promote her book. I mean, she's a right winger. Pierce Morgan is a right winger, but he didn't give her the opportunity to do that. So if you watch the full thing, she goes on to try to shoehorn in a plug for her book wherever she had the chance to do that. 
And you know she's desperate because she's even lobbying The View to bring her on so she can promote her shitty book, writing on Twitter, Hey, The View, you had Hillary Clinton on this week and Rachel Maddow recently. Are you scared to have me on? After all, there is a view outside of New York City. I talk about the women of The View in my book. Just stop. Nobody wants to read your shitty ghostwritten book. But the reason why she's so desperate is because certain retailers like Hudson Books won't actually be carrying her book. Now, what I love about this particular element of the story is that as Newsweek reports, this has sparked allegations of censorship from people like Trump Jr. And I just love this so much because the pro-book banning party is now crying censorship because retailers won't carry their books. But I mean, I thought that you said banning books was good. What if these retailers were worried that her book would groom children? Have you ever thought about that, Republicans? Of course not. <laughs> Look, they are clowns, but at least Democrats like John Fetterman and Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer are able to find common ground with these Republicans on the issue of genocide. It's so heartwarming to me to know that our politicians are able to come together and reach across the aisle in their support of bombing children in Gaza. It's just amazing. What a great country we live in. Love it so much here. Definitely not a dystopia.